Now let's examine Family Historian to see what Ancestral Sources has added. Locate the head of the family, Rupert Childs, and open his property box. Apart from the name and gender of the three original family members, all the data shown here was created by Ancestral Sources. Click on any entry and notice that its source is shown on the right hand side with the date of entry and the assessment completed. Click the sources for list and all the entries marked with an asterisk was created and cited by ancestral sources. Now select the facts tab and note that every fact includes the date, age, place and address was filled in. The 1901 census shows the date, age, place and address of Rupert Childs and his occupation as Clark. The place is filled in but not the address because it's assumed that he didn't necessarily work at his home address. Open the source census record and notice all the data that's been filled in by ancestral sources. And this is the tabbed list of the grid. Click on go to repository record and here we have the General Register Office details that were entered. Go back to the source and click on the Multimedia tab and here we have the image that was entered earlier. Now a census record that took just a few minutes to enter in Ancestral Sources has created many new facts and a new individual all citing a new source which is linked to a new repository and a new multimedia record. It could have all been done in Family Historian without ancestral sources but would probably have taken much longer using a tedious and repetitive sets of tests of steps. This is the end of the tutorial.